Hey guys, Juan Klo here. I hope all of you are doing really well and having a really great day. In today's episode of BidX 101, do we want to take a look on the BidX and a couple of heat sinks and figure out how to properly overclock the device? So let's get started and right into it. Despite the fact that I'm personally not a huge fan of overclocking my devices because I'd love to have them as quiet as possible, I usually underclock them. A couple of you guys want to know how to do this properly in order to not destroy your device. One thing that I do have with me here is one of these tiny heat sinks that you can get. They do have some adhesive on the back, so you just remove the adhesive film and then you can attach it to some of these components in order to properly cool them. There are a couple of caveats to doing that and we want to dive into that. So the first thing that we want to make sure is if you want to overclock your BitX, this right here is a BitX Gamma. We do have the bitch and sink on this right here and a proper fan. If you have like a small heat sink on it and a small fan, overclocking the device might not be a really great idea, especially when it comes to the cooling performance of poor fans and heat sinks in general. So what you want to make sure of, the first thing that you need is you need to have a proper heat sink and a proper fan. And then after that, you can already start playing around a little bit with it. You can go into the frequency menu and the voltage menu and play around with these values that you do have in there. If you want to take a look into excessive overclocking, now we're getting into a scene where it becomes a little bit dangerous of doing that. Dangerous not in terms of you can do something wrong, but you definitely can, but dangerous in terms of you are risking the device in every single term that you can think of. Because obviously, if you increase the heat on these devices, this will reduce the longevity of the overall structure and the components that are on this here. With heat, stress builds up and stress is not good for you and it's not good for hardware as well. But there are a couple of things that you can do. I've seen crazy builds on Reddit, on X, and on our Discord server as well on how to overclock it. There are a couple of awesome guides and awesome blog posts. I'll make sure to link them in the video description down below so that you can, if you want to read through them, take a look into them as well. But the general idea here is that we try it with a couple of small heat sinks and a proper heat sink that is attached to the ASIC. So the first thing that you need to make sure is, if you do take a look on the back side of your BitX, you see a couple of huge components, like there's this big component in the middle. This is the coil that is making sure there is no noise between the input voltage and the output voltage going to the AC chip, which is a component that is so big you don't actually really need to cool it. But right next to it, there's this tiny small black component. This is the so-called buck converter. This is the device that converts the 5 volt that are coming into your BitX and converts it downwards to the appropriate voltage that you want to use on your BitX. Let's say 1.2 volts. These 1.2 volts now go into your ASIC chip, heat it up and make sure that and yeah, allow your ASIC to function. This device can get hot and it does have limitations. So what you can actually do is you can get yourself some of these heat sinks and let me quickly pull off the film here. So I removed the film and now I can just simply attach the heat sink to the TPS, that's the name of it, on the back. This heat sink is obviously a little bit too big for it, but it helps with cooling it. Cooling this device also increases the efficiency overall. So even if you're not planning into actually overclocking your device, if you do cool this component a little bit better with such a tiny heat sink, it increases the efficiency because with more heat, the efficiency of this device or this component especially goes down. So just attaching a small heat sink will have the efficiency overall. So you don't reduce or you don't waste energy into heat, but now you use more energy for converting it into actual hash rate, which is a nice thing to do. So I've seen some of these people put on heat sinks in this area here as well. The reason for that is if we take a look on the structure of the bit 5 volts are coming in here and are now wandering down this section 
and downwards in this section is also going the other voltage for the AC chip. So there is a lot of voltage and amperage going over this section and that's the reason why plenty of people actually put on heat sinks on the front of your bidex as well. I've not done so, I've seen that it does improve the cooling performance of these specific sections but I'm not excessively overclocking my device so therefore I don't need it. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to actually attach one of these smaller heat sinks and of course they're just with glue, they can fall off so you need to make sure that you do watch these things. If you go into the section of overclocking you actually need to make sure that you do watch your device otherwise this can be dangerous. Who knows, if it overheats and there is something going wrong or it snaps or whatever, it might burn. I've never seen a Bidex do that, I've seen one of, a couple of these copycats doing that, while well, they, they, they are not good in a build quality anyway, but the Bidex itself, I've never seen it to do that if you slightly overclock it. I've also seen a couple of people putting heat sinks on the ESP, this silvery thing here, I wouldn't recommend doing that. It's, uh, the ESP itself does not create that much heat that you actually need to cool it. It can get warm to the touch and the reason for that is because all the components around it are getting warm and then this one warms up as well. So you can attach a heat sink but I don't recommend doing it. Especially right next to it is the Wi-Fi antenna so therefore if you do put some components above of it you might also decrease the capability of connecting to your Wi-Fi or just the Wi-Fi signal quality will get worse. So having a heatsink right next to the input voltage, okay. Having them on the back, on the back converter, okay. Having one right here, this is the back where the A6 sits, like there are, there's nothing. You could also attach a heatsink right here. Okay, do that. Just uh, try to remove as much heat as possible from the ASIC itself. And then I've seen a couple of people also use a second fan to blow fan from the back onto your bidex. It's a good idea if you want to play around with excessive overclocking and you can totally do that. The bidex itself can only control one single fan and you do have two fan controllers or two fan headers on here but only one fan controller. So even if you would put another fan into the second connector it would only control one of them. It cannot control both of them and the firmware will get confused because now there are two signals coming back to the ESP and telling him uh, two different RPMs of the fan. So it works, but uh, don't expect too much magic off of it. What we want to do now is we want to hop over to my PC and take a look on the web UI and how to properly overclock the device. And I want to give you a couple of hints and tips and tricks on how to do that properly. So let's go over. All right, now we are on the PC and we're taking a look on one of my BIDX devices. One of the first important things is run your BIDX for a couple of hours and then take a look on how it does performance wise and heat wise. We do see the ASIC temperature here is currently sitting below 60 degrees. The voltage regulator is also sitting below 60 degrees, which is a nice thing. And we do see the fan does only run at like 46%, so therefore it is good taking a look on these measurements. If you already see that your ASIC is struggling and it is above like 65 degrees Celsius and your voltage regulator is already above 70 or 80 degrees Celsius, I would strongly consider using one of these tiny heat sinks that I just told you about. The important thing is here, you want to make sure that the ASIC and everything else is in between a range of 50 to 60, 62 degrees. Anything above that is not really stable to use for excessive overclocking. So one of the cool things that we did with the newest firmware versions and so on is that a couple of things when it comes to overclocking have changed. First of all, don't get confused by this UI. It is one of the beta versions that we're currently working on. This will be brought to you very soon. So let's go over to the settings page. And now what you can do is obviously you can play around with these values here. A good approach here is if you run your bidex on like default values is just select the next one. Select like 550 and keep the core voltage the same. Just start with increasing the frequency in the steps that you do have available in here. If you do that, I highly recommend you to actually 
just watch it and see how it performs. Especially the part that you don't need to increase the core voltage is one crucial factor. The thing with the core voltage is it could help in certain scenarios, but it's not meant to help you that excessively. So the reason being here is you can play around with the core voltage for excessive overclocking and excessive undervolting, but in general, if you take a look on these big machines, they run on 12 volts plain. They don't actually change that much the voltage for the ASIC chips. So usually 1.2 volts should be the ideal factor, but not all of them are the same. So you need to play with it. And the reason being why you should increase the frequency first and afterwards look into the stats, how it does perform, let it run for a while, like change the frequency, give it half an hour, give it one hour and watch it again. Take a look on how does it perform. You do see my voltage regulator already got up to 63 degrees Celsius. So now I should consider if I use a fan on the back, the voltage regulator can easily go up to 100 degrees Celsius. That's not a big deal, but it can handle that. But the issue with that is the much more heat it has, the more inefficient it is. So cooling that is a nice factor in increasing your efficiency as well. If you're now, let's say we're now at the end and you said, all right, 625 it is, it's working awesomely. I'm running at 1150 volts with the, with the ASIC. Now what? Now you might consider using other values as well. In order to do that, you just go into the URL here. And at the very end, you type in question mark OC. If you do that, a new menu appears, or basically the menu changes. Now it allows you to input custom settings, and it also states to you custom settings can cause system and can, can cause damage and system instability. Only modify these settings if you understand the risk of running outside the designed parameters. What this means is don't be stupid. Don't put like, I don't know, 900 megahertz in there and expect it to work. It's not gonna happen. Overclocking your device takes a little bit of time, especially if you want to fine tune it in such a way that it works properly. What you could do is, let's say we have been sitting at 625 megahertz for the frequency. Now the next thing to do for me would be to go to 636 and watch it how it performs on that one. If that is good, we can even go to uh, 645. Just play around with these values. There is no exact like thing or exact step that you need to take. There's, as I said, there's no exact measure of what kind of frequency or core voltage you can use. You can play around with it, but don't get too small. I'd recommend increasing the steps by 10 to 15 megahertz per step. Don't go out of that scope unless you know what you're doing. There are a couple of people who are running their bid at like 700 megahertz on the core voltage of 1175 or similar values, that might work. But don't go for these values straight ahead. Just play around with this device a little bit and make sure that you do check the values on the cooling performance of them. Because it's really necessary that you don't damage your device, you wanna learn a little bit about it. So what you wanna do is you wanna slowly get into that. And as soon as you're done with that, just save these settings and share them with others. That's it. That's it for today's video. I do thank everybody for tuning in and don't forget to like and subscribe so don't miss out on any other BitX 101 video. See you.